Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling blessed this morning, full of the Spirit, and ready for the Word. Today is July the 20th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be found in Proverbs chapter 9, and we're going to begin at verse 9. So if you have your Bible in front of you, turn to Proverbs chapter 9, and let's begin in verse 8. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Now, the emphasis here is on the wise man. So my question this morning would be, what is the opposite of a wise man? Well, of course, it would be a foolish man or a fool. Now, have you ever met someone and in your conversation, they immediately became very defensive, began to push back and maybe even use the words, don't you judge me? Well, friends, that is an indication of a fool. And before you point so quickly to others, put yourself in their shoes. When you are being reproved, when you're being corrected, when you're being rebuked, do you become defensive? Do you become the fool? Or are you a wise man? Do you invite instruction? Do you invite scorn? Do you invite rebuke? You see, the truest indication that we are speaking to a fool or as Jesus said, a swine, when he said, cast not what is holy before the swine, those who would hate you, those who would push back, those who would become very defensive in their mannerisms, and maybe even in the words that they use against you. You see, John chapter 3 verse 20 tells us, everyone that does evil hates the light. Now, Jesus is represented as the light. He is also represented as the word. So you could say, everyone that doeth evil hates the word of God, and they will not come to the word of God because their deeds will be exposed. They will be reproved. They're pushing back against the word of God. They are not receiving rebuke. They are not receiving correction. And because of this, they are both fools and swine. But now look at verse 21, because this is the emphasis for this morning for us as followers of the Lord Jesus. It says, he who does truth comes to the light, comes to the Bible for the very purpose that his deeds may be made manifest so that he can deal with his sin. He can deal with his rebellion. And by doing so, as told in our text, he becomes a wise man. And because of that, he becomes even wiser still. And so what this is telling us is as the Lord reproves us, as he corrects us, and we deal with that correction, now he will open our eyes to a new state of correction that needs to be dealt with. But if we never deal with step one, we're never going to get to step two, or step three, or four, or five, or six. That's why the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord neither be weary of his correction. Well, the only way you would become weary is because it is becoming too burdensome. It's too repetitive. It's too constant. It's too continual. And of course, as the children of the living God, we know that that is exactly what occurs. His correction seems to be constant because there's much in us that has to be dealt with. And as soon as we get one thing made straight, we see something else that is crooked. And yet, as the Lord opens our eyes to these truths, we deal with each one very carefully and with a sorrowful heart, unlike the fool who is unwilling to admit his wrong. That's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18, if you see your brother, verse 15, if you see your brother sin a sin, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And if he hears you, and he repents, you've gained your brother. But in verse 16, he says, but if he does not hear you, 
that should be the first red flag that he is a fool because he is pushing back. And again, we don't need to say he is much. We need to apply this to ourselves. If we push back after our brother comes to us with a word of rebuke through love, that should be a red flag to us that we are acting very foolish. And we might want to even look deeper as to why that foolishness is there to begin with. Maybe we think that we are okay with God, and actually we're not. You see, we can change the outside, but only God can change the heart. Only God can change the desire. So we can pretend to invite rebuke, but if we're not truly humble in our hearts in receiving that rebuke, then we are not right with God. Well, in verse 2, he says, if he doesn't hear you, take two or three so that he understands this isn't a one-sided attack, that three of you stand in agreement. If he hears you, you've won your brother. If he doesn't, red flag number two. If you or I don't, red flag number two. Verse three, if he neglects to hear them, tell it to the entire congregation, the entire fellowship, the entire church. And then if he neglects to hear that church, that fellowship, that congregation, treat him as a fool, a heathen man and a publican and kick him out of the fellowship. Why? Because fools don't belong among the wise. Because the swine don't belong among the sheep. Because the heretic don't belong among the holy. And because the sinner doesn't belong among the righteous. And so in other words, what this is saying is if you want to find out where you stand in the family of God, how do you allow rebuke into your life? How do you allow correction into your life? Because that's the indicator, friends. So let's close by looking at our text one more time. Proverbs chapter 9, and let's focus on verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. And so the question that we must ask ourselves today, with close examination of our own hearts and honest admittance before God is do we wear the shoes of the fool or do we wear the robe of righteousness as the wise? And let me leave you with one last thought to ponder today. What makes them, what makes you, what makes me push back when we receive that rebuke? It's a simple five-letter word, friend. It's pride. Well, I'm so honored that you're here with us, friends. I truly feel blessed that you are benefiting from this ministry. And I pray that your walk today will be full of joy and your lips will be full of praise. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I love you and I'll see you on the next video.